Hello and welcome, guys. We are back here for round four for this league. Um, we are currently, I believe, one and two, so we're on our way to battling back. And we'll see if we can continue the trend, uh, the upward trend, that is, in this uh, particular match here. And without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. As always, if you're interested in the details of the deck list, go ahead and check out match one. That's where you'll find a little more information about the card choices and all of that. And we're good to go. All right, looks like we are good to go. Can we be on the play? Sounds good to me. And this hand looks pretty good to me as well. Yep, I think this is a keep. We'll probably be playing Explorer on turn two rather than Grazer, just because the Grazer represents plus one mana with this amulet. It might help us power out a Titan a bit faster, but we'll see. It does depend on what we're playing against. If we do end up playing against a discard deck here, they'll probably be forced to take Amulet, in which case our Explorer will still be able to dig us a little bit further out of this situation. It would be nice if this Valcut was a green source, so that we could play Grazer on one, if they do ha or on turn two, I mean, if they do happen to discard our Amulet. Don't have access to that at the moment. Prismatic Fist is an interesting one. Not really sure exactly what to make of that. We'll jam our amulet. I, the first deck that comes to mind when I see Prismatic Vista, for me, is 5-color Niv. I don't know of many other decks that would actually play Vista, in all honesty, so... And because we have our redundant bounce lane here, we're going to go ahead and pick up the Valcut, I think. Another bounce lane <laughs> is interesting. We could Growth Chamber, flow to blue, play Grazer, and Growth Chamber again, and pack for Azusa and play it. And then get two additional land drops. So we could go, like, Valakut, Growth Chamber, pay four, and have a Titan this upcoming turn. But that's going to be bad if they have some kind of interaction for our Azusa. I'm not really sure, though, if that's worth it. We can also play Valakut. Pack for Zeusa and play Titan this upcoming turn without playing out the Grazer. And that kind of conceals what we're doing, but they'll probably have access to, like, Lightning Helix or something. I'm going to go for the, the line that puts Zeus into play this turn, I think. It's a little weird, but... I think... If they do have the removal spell, we're probably going to get blown out either way. In which case, I'd rather have it happen in such a way that we have all of our cards out on the table. If they don't have the removal spell, I think. so. And they don't have it, so we're looking pretty good here. I suppose they could have something to kill one of our lands. Oh, I didn't think about that. It could be red-green Ponza. Doesn't look like they have a way to interact with our lands at the moment. They would have to have, like, a Simeon Spear Guide or something. Or they're playing a Simic deck, which is interesting. This must be five color Niv. I can't think of any other deck that would play the smattering of cards. All right, we'll see what they have for us here. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Simic Growth Chamber, um, just so that if they happen to have something that stops us here, we'll have Growth Chamber in hand to potentially... Okay, Quaddle does not bother me. Um be able to transmute Tolari West by keeping the Growth Chamber in hand, so. I mean, we could leave the Growth Chamber in play also. That seems alright to me. I'll pick up the Sanctuary instead, uh, since we have a second Sanctuary that we can search for on a Titan Trigger if we need to. 
This way we can have a Tolari West and a Growth Chamber in play, so so we don't have to have an amulet to have access to this. And I think we're going to go ahead and attack into the Ice Van Coatl regardless. I don't know, maybe that's wrong. Trading the Titan for the Coatl doesn't seem that great in hindsight. Oh no, it doesn't have Death Touch. Never mind. What am I saying? Yeah, attacking is definitely correct here. I'll attack with the Azusa too. Get in there. And then here we'll set up another Talari West. Um, and we don't have to pay for a pack this upcoming turn, so we don't need to worry about getting an additional green source. So we could just get our Fuel the Dead preemptively. We already have Valakut rolled up, so... Bog doesn't seem relevant. Yeah, it's just going to be Fuel the Dead, I think. I suppose it's possible we could have gone for a line that lets us play Dryad this turn, but that doesn't seem necessary. I guess this could be that Salt High Snow deck. Now I'm not sure what kind of things we need to play around. We have a Titan in play already. Okay, well, we don't need to play around anything because they're just going to concede for us. <laughs> hmm. Still a little unclear exactly what they're playing. I think Bayloth's going to be a fine move regardless. Explosive seems alright against Ice Fangs. Packer's going to be good regardless, I think. Rex Age is a little unclear. Disputes will probably be good. I think Beast Within's are going to be good as well. I'm not really willing to bring in these others. I might want to keep one Explosives for those Ice Fangs. Let's see. I guess we can cut a Summoner's Pact. Um a grazer since they're not on a particularly aggressive strategy stirring uh, once again all right i think we can do without i guess we don't need grazer that terribly badly depending on what they're playing another sonus pack doesn't seem to hurt to cut what else I guess Azusa, despite the fact that Azusa was insane in that particular game. <laughs> Espoir is probably going to be good no matter what they're playing. Hmm. I don't love this explosives, but I don't know. Well, Trim, Stirrings, Redundant Amulet. Which one? Oh, there we go. And I guess a Redundant Land. That seems like it should be fine. Yeah. We'll try this. Hmm. There's a hand with no green sources at all. We might be able to Vesuva to copy like a force or something, depending on what they lead on. And it has a Mystical Dispute, but no blue mana. It's possible we should be siding out Pack Negation. Um, I don't know. I don't love this hand. I'm going to mulligan it. This hand's much better. This is definitely a keep. And I guess we bottom the Vesuva here. Because we want all of our untapped sources, and these two forests are differently named, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm kind of expecting more of a control deck here, in all honesty. We'll get the Garen Brig out there, I guess. We'll see if going a little slower punishes us, depending on what kind of strategy they're playing. 
Nah, let's not expose the growth chamber. We can wait on that one. <laughs> the pack negation sneaks back up to us. It's like, don't worry, I got you, bro. They were going to cast something, and then they weren't. Interesting. If they play an Ashiok here, I'm probably going to lead the Dryad out first. They don't. I still want to play the Dryad, I think. We've got a slightly accelerated Titan with our Garenbrig anyways, so I'd rather get this tracker to resolve, and I want to play it on a turn where we can play a land and get a clue out of it immediately as well. So, yeah. Um, do you want that one on top? I think we do. Definitely don't mind them using an Aether Gust here. <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure what's going on. Obviously, it's some kind of blue green X control strategy with Aether Gust and Field of Ruin. Yeah, so this is just going to be some kind of Sultai control deck. Um, do we jam the Dryad again or do we go for the Tracker? It's kind of a tough choice. They can Field of Ruin and then play a blue source on their upcoming turn and hold up Cryptic. So I think this is going to be the turn for the Tracker. And it Snap Resolved. So I'm happy to see that. I mean, it didn't really Snap Resolve. It just Resolved. But that's good enough for me. I think we have to give him the Field of Ruin target on the Growth Chamber, sadly. We we're going to leave that one in play. I mean, we could pick up the Garenbrig. Doesn't seem awful. They could field of ruin our Garenbrig as well. We'll get our regular forest. Well, I mean, I guess now we're just picking up a regular forest. <laughs> and we get an extra clue out of it too. Value, guys. That's what you call a value win. I will take it. There's an Ashiok. That's an Ashiok, I guess. And they milled us, hitting a crumbling vestige of note, and that's about it. Um, If we play Dryad and float one... Nah, there's no way we can play both dryads this turn, I think. We'll have five. Seven. Nah, I don't think we can do it. But we can't play a dryad and crack a clue. Do we need to trade with this Ice Fang with our Child Tracker? I feel like we don't want to do that. Uh, hold on. I guess we also could draw a Mystical Dispute and maybe would want to hold that up. Although, we can do that even off of Basic Forest if we happen to play Dry, so we can go like... Oh, well, we can't do it this turn, but... Bayloth is interesting. I guess we're playing a Dryad. Yeah, seems fine. And then, on this Growth Chamber, I don't know if I want to leave it in play or not. Because we definitely want to play it at least to get the clue. But the question is, do we need the repeated bounce land? I mean, that would be representing like two, two, at least two clues a turn if they don't interact with one of these dryads and possibly three clues a turn. If we do leave it in play, though, we have access to pack negation if we need it. I don't know what they would play here that we would need to pack negation, in all honesty. I'm not really super worried about casting Titan just yet, just because I feel like we've got other things going on that are worth playing out first. I might come to regret this, but I think maybe picking up the Simic Growth Chamber is going to be the best line. You know what? I changed my mind. I'll pick up a forest, and we'll just use our clue to top deck into another balance land, and it'll be no big deal whatsoever. I am willing to trade a Dryad for this Ice Fang, I think. Unless we happen to find a Valakut. They mill our Slayer Stronghold of Note. Okay. Let me pull this up so y'all can keep track of it. Garenbrig is interesting. Um, 
Let me go ahead and get our two clues worth of value here before combat. Because we are going to trade this Dryad, and we may not want to play another Dryad. We'll just go ahead and send this guy. We could send both at Ashiok and put Ashiok to one, but then we'd still have to trade our tracker. I'm not really willing to do that. Okay, we get an Ice Fang trade. Okay, okay. That is fine by me. We'll go ahead and activate Garenbreak to get our maximum mana here. And we'll probably play the Bayloth also. Yeah, that seems fine. And this way we are holding up a, crew cl a clue crack. <laughs> or, for all they know, perhaps Mystical Dispute or something. Looking pretty good here. Ice Fang. Uh, we don't care about that. They're milling us? Really? Okay. They hit one of our two T-Wests. So, so far they've hit the things that matter, a Slayer Stronghold and a Talari West. Yes, you can have an Astrolabe. That is fine. Attack. Right, we'll clue. No reason not to. We have a secret hidden mode counterspell in our hand anyway, so tapping out doesn't really have any detriment. Ooh, Sunhome's interesting. Sunhome's quite good. Yeah, I'm gonna play that one. And this way we can guarantee that we're getting this Ashiok out of play. Actually, because they minused it, we are already guaranteed to get this Ashiok out of play, unless they have a second Quaddle. Um, whatever. I'm gonna play the Sunhome. And we'll swing everything at Ashiok, I guess. I don't mind using my mana to sun home the Tylus Tracker if I have to. And if they do something to kill a Dryad, I will definitely sun home it. Do I want to sun home this? Or play a Titan with Pack Negation? Can we do both? One, two, three, four. We'd have one, two, three, four. No, we have to tap the sun home. So we would be a couple mana short. I think our board might be good enough to kill them now, but I also don't know if I care about this Bayloth that particularly much. If we play Titan and are forced to back it up with Pack Negation and they have like an Aether Gust, then we might end up having some problems, but I think that we're in enough advantage that just slamming a Titan here is going to be fine. Um, let's do it this way. That's fine. Because we even have the Aether Gust covered here, so. I highly doubt they can stop this Primeval Titan from resolving. They do have the Aether Gust. We might want to get a second blue source just in case they're able to feel the ruin, like our Simic Growth Chamber, and kill our Dryad, so. Force of Negation. Oh boy. Okay, well, at least. Oh, dead exile. I was like, why did it go to our graveyard? This is our exile. So we will not have to pay for this pack mitigation. We'll put him on top, I suppose. Do we crack the clue now? I guess not. Let's go ahead and get a another growth chamber in play. Eh, why not? I mean, actually, we could just hold on to the Vesuva and just play it, use it to play indefinitely. Just endless stream of clues. I'm okay with that. Dude, we have six extra cards just sitting over here waiting for us. That feels quite nice. Not gonna lie. Another Ashiok, huh? Um, yeah, sure. 
If they're going to minus us, we are going to draw off with the clue in response. Come on. Clue. All right, Ashok, do your worst. They hit uh, the one sanctuary, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this Ashok minus is not actually really impacting us. That's why it's generally correct to just leave the Ash off in play, although it's going to die immediately, so can't really blame them that much. We don't have a stronghold, unfortunately, so there's no way we'll be able to haste any creatures here. I really need to yield this. There we go. Uh, Talari West is interesting. I guess we're just sending everything at them. Do we play anything preemptively? I'm going to go ahead and, I think, crack a clue. We don't really need to find any lands with this Titan just yet. It's going to be fine if we are not able to cast a Titan, but I want to see if we draw any lands that inform our decisions, because getting the land drops out of Dryad before it potentially dies is definitely a relevant thing. Um, Yeah, let's get a Zagoth Triome, I suppose. That seems like a fun one. <laughs> And we can afford the Ancient Stirrings to find a second land here as well, I think. Cavernous Souls is a pretty good one. Boros Garrison is better, though. If they're able to kill our Dryad, we'll have Red-White for the Double Strike to play against Quaddles. So that's what I'm going to take. And we'll go ahead and play that out. And now I might actually pick up the Zagoth Triumph that we just put in play, uh, so that we can copy the Boros Garrison, so they can't field it and cut us off of red and white. So, we're not going to be able to do that this turn, but that's fine. We'll send all of these at Ashiok, I suppose. And then, yep, that just happens. Just happens. All right, well, we have Titan with Dispute back up, so let's do that while we still have a Field of the Dead to search for. And this tracker is just doing all the work here. All right, so we are two and two. We're definitely fighting back here. We are guaranteed to get half of the league value back, so definitely salvaging a poor early start. Yeah, I mean, that was great. That just goes to show why this card is in the list at all. I attribute that entire win only to Tyler's Tracker. Tyler's Tracker, keep doing what you do. But yeah, um, I don't know. That was pretty straightforward as well. This, this whole league has been pretty cut and dry, I think. <laughs> Although, realizing the... Uh, the Grazer and Azusa line was pretty good. That's pretty good. But yeah, um, I don't have much else to say. If you liked it, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, say the things that I didn't say. If, if you have something that is relevant, let people know in the comments. We are just trying to further our knowledge here, uh, become masters of this deck, as you might say. And yeah, with that said, this is Redface Menace, signing off.